Hey, so I couldn't leave you guys hanging. So enjoy the video. I'm on the road. I'm nowhere near Arkansas. Folks, we're coming down the home stretch here, and I am not going to be able to do another spray session before I leave. However, we are going to give you a fairly lengthy update, but I also wanted to include a couple of things. And I, I was, as I was getting ready to shut down pretty much the entire studio, the first time in probably three years, we've shut down for more than just a couple of days. So this is like a three-week adventure cross country couple of things that i want to go over with you guys if you're going to be away from your house or away from your shop for any period of time clean this thoroughly clean your airbrush be good to it uh, if you want to put a couple of drops of oil in here to keep that lubricated i don't necessarily recommend oil but i've cleaned mine out with isopropyl alcohol i use the 91 percent and then I put some cleaning solution in it. I flushed it really, really well. I've gotten pretty much everything out of it. I've cleaned the needle. The needle came out through the front and then replaced the needle. And then I'm leaving. I've thoroughly cleaned all my parts. I'm going to leave that completely off of my airbrush. Um, the other thing that you want to do if you have an air compressor that's got a tank, make sure you remember to drain it. Make sure you remember to drain it. It's going to be really loud. But you, should, you guys should be cleaning this and draining it every couple of days. Because if you don't, your tank is going to rust. And you don't want a rusty tank. You want to extend the life of this air compressor as long as you possibly can. And just simple maintenance tricks like giving this a bleed every couple of days. Or if you use your air compressor every single day, go ahead and do that. The nozzle's on the bottom. And then I'm going to leave this open um, so that it can continue to drain and dry out while I'm gone. There's no sense in keeping it, it closed because there's no sense in keeping it closed. I'm not going to be using it. I don't need any pressure in it. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to let that bleed. And it's just a concrete floor, so I don't care if I get water all over the floor. But if you want to put like a drain pan or a drip pan over that, then go ahead and do that. On to the next thing. We are down to the last couple of orders going out of here before I leave. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a sample of that. And I'm probably going to talk about um, a couple of these uh, at length, just because they're patterns that you guys probably haven't seen in a while or ever. Um, a few of these, like the Sakana. Um, I like the heritage ones. I love doing state flags. I, I just got a challenge to do the Maryland flag, which, um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Maryland flag, it's a little more complex, but I did get a challenge to do that. So when I get back from vacation, I probably will do that for you guys and see if we can put that into a spray session. Cause that's going to be, that's going to be a little more complex than the Texas flag, but we love our Texas flag. Arkansas loves Texas. Not necessarily Razorbacks loving the Longhorns, but you know what I mean. It's it's neighborly state love. So I did mention, I've been mentioning repeatedly online. It's been on the website since September 22nd. Um, I've put it on all of my Facebook pages. I've put it on my Instagram. I've put it on my Twitter feed. Um, if you guys ordered stuff after the 22nd, and uh, this was actually ordered the 24th, but it was a one piece. So I was able to get that done for Steven. Um, but everything else, because I'm working at capacity and you guys got to remember, it's just me. So like all the Labor Day stuff, we've finished that. I say we, like me and my split personalities, I don't have them, but that's been completed. So there's just, there's a lot of orders that I have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So we are down the home stretch. Everything that was ordered prior to the 22nd of September has been finished, including the 24th, this one right here. Um, everything else is going to be attended to immediately upon my return. So just a heads up for that, because remember, it's just me. It's just me here and me and my Iwana spraying away every day for you guys. 
So this is the only vacation that I've taken all year. It's the only one that I'm going to take all year. I'm wrapping basically three weeks into one and going cross country to see my family on the East Coast and a, lo a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in a very long time. And I'm going to be chasing some pretty big salmon, so I'm excited about that. But we do have a few lures to get through, so I want to try and give you a breakdown of what I've been spraying so these four right here, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave them alone because these are the last four that I sprayed, and they're still just a little bit tacky. Um, so these are going to stay here till the end of this evening. I'm shooting this on Sunday. I'm going to try and get this uploaded tomorrow night, which is Monday for you guys, so you can see it either Monday night or Tuesday morning from the hotel somewhere in the mountains of Virginia along the Appalachians. So I'm going to try and, try and like heck to get this out for you guys. This is the Mad Clown. I always want to call it a Mad Hatter, but it's a Mad Clown. It's a very cool pattern. It's um, specifically sprayed in the Tom Gore Bloodline series from Createx. So you've got um, the blood red, the ochre yellow, and uh, the hematoma, which is like the bruised color. Almost looks grape. And then my signature spray in a wiggle wart. This over here you guys have seen before. It's called the Static Line. Um, that is going to be, these are all part of a uh, single order. Citrus Gill. These are fun. This is the 62 line. I call it the 62 line, but actually it's like a 65-8B. But it's not sold as a 65. But very cool gill spray. And then this is the one that I really wanted to feature in the spray session that I was unable to, I just, you know, my, my laptop is gone. Um, it's all packed up. It's all ready to get on the road. It's inside my camera bag. So sorry about that guys, but I promise we're going to load you guys up with more spray session footage when we get back. But this is uh this is a good baby bass pattern. And pretty much we'll go we'll go in depth because I'll make you guys one of these on camera. But we uh, we shoot black first, and then we overspray white through a mesh, and then we add in a few different tones of greens, and then we add our bass pattern, shoot a little red on the throat, and add those killer eyes. It's a very textured bait. It's got a good look to it. Swims fantastic in the water. This is that Dinger 100. Uh, I've got a few of these going out in various orders on the desk. Had a couple more of these to spray on request for a customer. You guys, if you watch the Facebook feed, you saw me do the Gandalf the Gray for Halloween. Since I'll be on the road, this is the only one that I was able to spray in a Halloween pattern. And I owe a big apology to Amy. Amy is a new sprayer in the community, but she's really up and coming. She's doing really well. And I'm proud of the stuff that she did. And she sent me a breast cancer awareness challenge that I was unable to complete. I am so sorry, Amy. Uh, really wanted to get that in, but maybe as a makeup bait when I get home, maybe I'll do, even though it'll be November, it won't be the, the right month, but I'll, I'll try and make that up to you, I promise. So thank you so much for the challenge. I unfortunately had to decline because I just, I just simply ran out of time, and I'm so sorry about that. This is a Phantom. This is really the only one that I sprayed for myself, but this is one of those um, those Phantom Banshees. This is the BN3. It's a smaller bait. Um, cool little bait, though. It's got a lot of flush uh, orange on the throat and the belly. And I'm going to go after some crappie in my home pond. It's, it's sort of, I guess you could call it a lake. It's 38 acres. It's It's not... It's not really a lake. It's like a great big community pond, but it's cool. It's beautiful. And this time of year, even with the leaves kind of going down, it's still got a lot of clear water in it. One of my favorite spots to fish back home. So I'm going to try and hit some crappie with that. This is the Sakana. It's a specialty lure. It's in the specialty line on the website at www.jackalbaits.com. I don't get the chance to spray a whole bunch of these, but when I do get to spray them, man, I love doing the pattern. It's so much fun. It's just an out-of-the-box crawfish imitation with a lot of fluorescence it's got fluorescent red tangerine orange fluorescent green those glow glow look at that glow that is awesome tell me a fish won't just lose its mind when it sees those eyes coming at it and then of course the japanese symbol for fish sakana fish 
don't mess with Texas. Not ever. Not now, not ever. This is, uh, this is part of the Wide Open Spaces Heritage line that I'm going to be bringing out uh, in 2020, doing a lot of state flags for you guys. And some of the flags are more complex than the others. This is just true blue, red, white, and blue. Got to love, gotta love Texas flags. Got the star, got the white. And Stephen asked for this on a holographic foiled bait. And that is what you got. This is also a dinger. This is that autumn shad. Beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. Looks like fall leaf coming at you. Got a little bit of flush red underneath. Some gold and copper. And you've got that really cool, I love iridescent paint shift colors. Or color shifting paint. Yeah, let's say it in the right order, Jen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on vacation. Um, so we have some beautiful fades on this. It's just a regular autumn shad, gizzard shad on that dinger holographic foiled S. Another pretty one. This is the red discus. And this is that royal red discus with those mega eyes. A little bit of blue flush up top, blue on the belly. And the red and black traditionally that you would see in a discus. Discus being um, cichlids, but they're kind of docile for cichlids. You would think cichlids as uh, the Amazonians, like Oscars, which are super, super aggressive. And then some of the African cichlids are super, super aggressive as they get bigger. But the discus, they're more related to angelfish than they are anything else. And they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Look them up if you get the chance. This, these are the, the Copper Craw Reboots, and I love, I've shot a couple of different styles of these for different customers at their request. This is more the traditional Copper Craw, but look at that blaze orange on the belly. Look at all the depth in that. Talk about shape shift, color shift. Looks like it's alive. So that is just a ton of fun to spray, and I'm going to be spraying a lot more of these. Reds and oranges, I love spraying reds and oranges and actually throwing reds and oranges this time of year. I was mentioning on, uh, I did a vanilla bean post. I'll get to that one in just a second. Um, this time of year, I like very subtle match the hatch and reds because your crayfish are turning red this time of year. They've already uh, gone through the molts that they're going to go through in the course of the year and they're fattening up. They're eating as much food as they possibly can. This is that Hot Sticks Craw on that Holographic 1.5. Wildfire Shad, also in a 1.5. Those red reptile eyes. Another good pattern. And again, this is a black base that I have... Um, these are the old meshes that I'm still using. I'm trying to conserve as many of them as I can because they're not always easy to find. You can find them sometimes at Hobby Lobby, but I don't know that Doris, there's been a discussion ongoing about Doris, whether or not they actually make this stuff anymore. Um, certainly it has not been available on Amazon, but uh, I guess some of the guys are saying that it's not. They've ordered it on Walmart, but they're not able to actually acquire it. Um, just says purchase pending. So, but on the... Uh, on that holograph, and you can see a little bit of the flash in that cheek right there. LJ MD50 in the Norfolk Lake Craw. The Angry Baits. Sample pattern, dotted. Uh, actually used a pen instead of paint on that one. And that KBS Diamond Strength Clear as a dip. Just a couple left. Love these reds. Love, love, love these reds. It's another morph of a craw. Black eyes. The Glacier. This is in a 100 SP, another dinger. Glacier because of the blue that fades up and the yellow on the belly. Very simple, very transparent paint. Great all around fall going into winter bait and the vanilla bean last but certainly not least 
It just makes me want to have some Briar's ice cream. And that's it, folks. I'm going to finish packing, get on the road, and I will talk to you guys and send you pictures and stay in contact with you throughout the three weeks. Um, it's going to be a little bit slow on uploads because who knows when I get into upstate New York along the Canadian border, I have no idea what kind of cell service I'm going to have. I'm going to be staying in a cabin with my best friends. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to upload from there, but I promise you, I promise you, I'll try and make it into town once or twice while I'm there so that we can uh, at least exchange some pictures and I can show you whether or not I've beaten my PB at 21 pounds on an Atlantic salmon. That's what I'm trying to beat this year. I have my, my record is a 21 pound Atlantic and uh, let's, let's see what we can do, what kind of damage we can do and how much meat we can bring home to the family. So you guys take care. I always appreciate the company. It's the best in the world. I love all you guys. I'm glad that I've got some fellow fish head airbrushers out there and I will talk to you on the next video. See ya and happy casting.